Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode number 37 of the Whitlings Prototype. Today, what we're going to be doing is unprojecting our edges. And by unprojecting, I mean translating from 3D space to 2D space. Uh, Unity has a very simple function for us to use it's camera dot world to screen point. Um, Actually, we have two options. We're going to be using world to screen point, but there's also a world to viewport point. <clears throat> so world to screen point. This will give us pixel data, so pixel values. And world to viewport. I believe this is going to give us, oh, what do they call that? I think it's orthonormalized coordinates. So between negative one and one. And this is how OpenGL draws its stuff. Probably DirectX too. I haven't gone too far into DirectX. <clears throat> but yeah, we care about pixel data because that's where all of our calculations are currently. So that's what we'll be using. Um, <clears throat> just in case you forgot or you weren't, you didn't watch the previous episode, the idea is we're going to take the top four corners of our cube, and then we're going to unproject those into two-dimensional space onto the screen, and we're going to draw lines in between those four edges, <clears throat> and then we're going to do a line-to-line -line collision between the thing the user drew and those four edges. And that will tell us what direction the user wants the cube to turn. One of the big advantages of this is that <clears throat> we don't need our camera to be locked to 90 degree axes. I'm still probably going to keep it that way for phone, but if I ever move to make this game an uh, AR game, where you'd move the camera around as, or move your phone around as the camera of the world, then this is going to be 100% necessary. Also, I think if we do it this way, it'll clean up a lot of our rotate code as well. This is a lot more mathematically based instead of a whole bunch of ifs. We'll still need ifs. Always, always ifs. <clears throat> so, I guess. Let's get to it. Uh, we've got our collider line relative size. That's where we left off last time. Oh, that's a real pin. <laughs> um, so if this is our actual line between our two edges, our collider that we're going to be using is going to be somewhat shorter. Sure, that's fine. That doesn't have to be straight. So this way, if the user draws a line like this, it's not going to do anything <clears throat> because I feel like this is too close to this edge. I don't want to. I would rather do nothing than spin the wrong way. Because if the user accidentally spins something the wrong way, then uh, they have to spin it back. That's more time wasted. It's frustrating. It's easier for. Maybe we would have some sort of visual feedback to let the user know, hey, that was a little too close to the corner. I'm not sure which way you want to spin that cube. So we've got our private class, unprojected cube edge. We've got our begin and end. These will be the actual points of the collider, the corners, and then these will be the collision line begin and end. <clears throat> <laughs> so let's get our four unprojected cube edges. We created our vert list. We culled the vert list. Uh, this debug seems to be working fine, so I'm going to 86 it. And let's see. So we want to calculate edges. And this is going to be a unprojected cube edge, cube edges. And this is going to be an array of a specific size. Oh, wait. Yes, I think I need to do this. Cube edges. Four. Oh, 
Well, I edge is less than four. I'm always a little bit reticent about using hard-coded values like this, but it's not like a cube is going to change its number of sides or edges. So it should be okay. Like <laughs> I don't really want to make a constant called like edge count. Um, maybe I should. Ugh. And I guess I could use that up here too. Okay. So we've got our edge count, and I want to go from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and 3 to 0. <clears throat> And we'll grab the current edge. And we could just use a constructor here, right? So I could make it in a way. Well, let's just do it this way. Begin is equal to. Verts at I edge. And we'll say end is equal to, uh, we need to do a conditional here, because three is supposed to loop to zero, right? So if I edge is equal to edge count minus one, I want to do verts at zero. Otherwise, I want to do verts at I edge plus one. And let's make a function, calculate collision line. And this should take in, what did we call that? Collider line relative size. Can I do a control dot? Generate method. Nice. We don't need to throw that exception, so let's see. Let's go back to the drawing board, shall we? I've got a start, some direction, an unknown direction, and an end. So line SE equals E minus S. I'm assuming it's going this way. It could go either way, um, but start to end just makes more sense to me. So what we need to do is we need to normalize SE. No, 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 no. We just need to scale SE by that collider ratio. And so CS, which is collider start, um, that's going to be S plus SE. times ratio, so times ratio is going to get us the small one, and we'll divide that by 2. So we're essentially pushing CS, oh, we want to push it out half of the distance that we're going to be moving. 
So this would need to be one minus ratio. Right, so let's do a more, um, let's say this is at zero X and this is at 10 X. And I want my ratio to be 0.7. So that means that the space here, if we added up those two empty spaces, we're going to get 0.3. So that means I want to push C, uh, the CS here, over 0.3 over 2. So this would be 0.15 and this would be 0.85. And you can see here that the distance is still 0.7 between these two collision start collision ends. So that's why we need to do 1 minus ratio over 2. And then multiply that times the SE line. Hopefully that makes sense. It made sense to me. Um, maybe if you see the code, it will make more sense too. So let's see. So begin to end. And I guess we could call this a vector three. Offset is equal to 1 minus collider line relative size divided by 2. Times begin to end plus begin. Oh, wait a minute. Um, let's just, this is just the offset. This is how much we're going to use. And so our collision line begin, this is going to be equal to begin plus offset. And our collision line end is going to be end minus offset. Hmm. Pretty straightforward. Now we need to test it, right? That's very important. Um, this probably should go in our debug touch input. Um, so, Draw unprojected edges. Oh, and this lives inside of our mouse controller. Where does that live? Cube controller. Okay. Well, it does seem like we're going to need to move this out. Other classes are going to need to pass it around. Sure. Um, <clears throat> okay, now remember, these edges are still in world space. That's a problem. That's a big old problem. Um, we need to convert those. Let's get rid of all these, keep our to-do. We need to convert these to pixel space. What don't you like about this? 
inaccessible lol right i deleted the internal i always forget that internal is public for the project um World to screen point. And I guess we could just pass this whole thing to world to screen point, couldn't we? Not exactly the prettiest line of code. But it should do. And now that both of these are in pixel space, then our calculate collision line should work perfectly. <laughs> so let's instantiate. Oh dear. Nice debug code. Doesn't have to be pretty, right? I'm going to delete this eventually. So this is going to be, unfortunately, a fair amount of copy paste. Debug point prefab vector three eight zero plot dot identity debug point container transform. And then we're going to get the component rect transform anchored position equals edge at begin. We're going to do the same for end. And then for collision line begin and collision line end, I'm going to do, we're going to change the color of this. So new point, get component image. Oh. That lives in the Unity Engine UI namespace. <clears throat> and we'll do a color dot red. So we've defined the function. And once we're done calculating the collision line, we have access to hmm. Oh boy, this class doesn't have access to the debugger. <clears throat> And that's called a debug touch input. So we'll calculate the collision line and draw each of the edges. It's going to give us a lot of points, but that's totally fine. Um, <laughs> that's interesting. We're doing this on a swipe. Yeah, we should do it every swipe. The camera could change in between swipes. <clears throat> Is it testable? We still need to link it up. New controller needs our... Come on. Come on. There we go. Debug touch input. Swipe. 
Boom. New controller 187. So it's saying either current edge is nothing, which doesn't make sense to me, or maybe camera hasn't been set. That is main camera. Hmm. So let's go into debug mode and let's see what seems to be the issue. So tap worked fine. It only got angry during the swipe. Oop. Yuck. There we go. Ah. <clears throat> okay, so our cube edges are all empty. They're all nothing. So we have to make the array and then we have to... Could I do a double assignment here? I bet I could. And remember, assignment goes from right to left. So first we're assigning a new cube edge to this part of the array. And then we're taking this part of the array and assigning it to this temporary variable to help keep our code clean. Oh, we shouldn't have used the red color. We already got red. Oh, hey, hey, that looks pretty good. Um, <laughs> Let's change it to white. I think that that is exactly what we wanted to have. Mm -mm -mm, blue. This shouldn't be a tint, this should be a color override, if I recall. <clears throat> nice. Very cool. So let's go to our cube controller and let's change this to 0. 0.5. No, 0. 0.6. Excellent. So these, these debug points that we're getting, and you can see these are just in screen space. They have nothing to do with the world. But it's going to make our life really easy. You can see zoomed in. It's easier to see up here, the point six. Hmm. Super cool. Nice and easy. See, when you have a plan, no, that's not true at all. <laughs> when you have a plan, you fail faster, or you succeed more quickly. One of the two. So where are we at now? We've got our colliders. Unproject to create four edges. Uh, shorten edges to invalidate confusing swipes. We've done that. <clears throat> um, average four points to get the center. We can do that in here. So we've got our unprojected center, and then I'm going to, oops. Ooh, you know what, we'll just do cube edges Oh no. We'll just do current edge dot begin every time. That should be fine. Divide by equal edge count. And let's cast this to a float just to be safe. I don't want to do integer division. That would be not good. <laughs> I have an idea. Let's go back to our touch debug touch input. So 
So let's just pass a position and color, right? So this is going to make this a lot cleaner. We'll make the default value color red. Oh, what don't you like about this? Must be a compile time constant. Interesting. Fine. So we've compressed that in a very nice and clean way, but that also allows us to debug touch, draw point, unprojected center, and let's do color dot white. There we go. Dang, that looks very pretty. Oh, and the yellow and blue matches up with the <laughs> the texture. Ooh, buddy, I like that a lot. Look at that math. Mm. Beautiful. So we got the center. The center seems to be working just fine. Um, what's next? Get the center. Draw the user line. Okay. I'm gonna comment these two out. Seems like they are doing their job. Calculate the center, um, calculate user swipe vector. So we're going to say unprojected center plus, do we have a direction yet? Yeah, we have a direction and a distance. Uh-oh, it might be time to make a line class. I think it's time. Now oh, this is actually the swipe end, huh? And begin is just the center. <clears throat> Where would line go? Line would probably go in utilities, and we don't have a utilities folder yet. Let's let's rectify that problem. Oh, we do have a utility folder. Nice. C sharp line. Probably should be doing all of this. Oh no. You know what, let's do that now. Let's do that right now. I want my good old pretty, pretty setup back. And I do believe that it lives in the Unity install, in editor data, 
resources, script templates, new behavior script. Oof. Oh, come on. I've got a sublime text here. There we go. Dun, 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 dun. Get rid of these. Uh, there are spaces there. Sure. And I guess I don't need these comments. I know it's starting to update due. And I can move these to Unity message functions. There we go. Oh, that's okay. Um, so I need to be able to open Sublime Text in administrator mode. There we go. Oof. That's okay. A little bit of work for a lot of result. <clears throat> In fact, I am so inclined to test it immediately. Much better. Cool. Yeah, let's make these public. Vector 3 begin. Vector 3 end. I don't know. I'm kind of tempted to make them private. Should anything be modifying these lines is the real question I have to ask. And unfortunately, my answer is no. This is not a mono behavior. So we can nix the message functions. And that means we'll need a constructor. And we can use like this keyword in order to get around our function parameters being exactly the same as our member variable names. So we're also going to need a function to tell if two lines overlap each other. So this is going to be the line for the whole edge. I don't know how much I feel about that. So how about line edge and then collision. What don't you like about that? Inaccessible. Okay, those definitely need to be... Could I just say... Public get? Is that illegal? 
Read only automatically implemented properties is not available in C Sharp Plus for. <sighs> okay. Well, we'll just make them public again. Dang it. <laughs> oh, that's a good question, Max Death. Hello, also. Uh, public get private set. I'm not sure. Must be more restrictive. This, this can't work, I think. Accessor must be more restrictive than the property or indexer line dot begin. Yeah, I'm afraid that I'm just gonna have to deal with public member variables for my line class. It's okay. It's not gonna kill me. So I'm working on Oh hey. Right. First I'm refactoring lines into my code. But um, I'm working on touch input so the user can spin the cube from any camera angle. So these are our edges, current edge dots. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I haven't done too much with, um, I guess they're called properties in C Sharp, just because Unity is so restrictive with its super old implementation of C Sharp. I don't know if they're ever going to fix that. It would be nice, but I doubt it. Still angry. Really? Unprojected cube edge? Ah, no, unprojected cube edge has an edge. And an edge has a begin. So what are you angry about? Oh, I hadn't saved it yet. Bonk, bonk. Oh boy, that is gross. Edge dot edge. Um, this needs to change. <clears throat> oh, nice. I think this is. I just reinstalled my machine. Okay, so this is still 20, version 2017. <clears throat> but yeah, on Sunday, I re imaged my machine. So I thought I, I would have the most recent version. Unprojected collision. Ah. thinking there we go so what I'm doing is based on the camera position oh nice very cool I'll probably look at I'm probably not going to upgrade right away um, I found that unity is like most software they they want to push something out and then after a couple months it will be you know, not terrible. <clears throat> oh, no reference exception. What's going on here? Cube edges. Oh, dear. Let's 
So current edge dot begin or current edge equals new line And then when we calculate our collision line, there we go, pass that. Refactoring is always a little bit tedious, but it's really nice when everything works again. Do you work with Unity often, Max Death? Hmm. Oh, right, I commented out that debug code, so I think everything's working fine. See, I'm taking the corners and unprojecting them into 2D space, so I can just do a line-to-line -line collision to figure out which edge of the cube the user crossed over. So like the blue dots are the collision line that I'm testing against, the yellow dots are the corners, and the white dot is the center. It looks a little bit goofy. I like it though. Oh, nice. Very, very cool. Yeah, you can do some pretty cool stuff with Unity. <clears throat> it's not the it's not the end all be all of engines, but the portability is where it really shines. So back to where I was before I decided it's time to make a line class. No. There we go. So we've got our swipe. And we've got our edges. And so we'll say if swipe dot overlaps cube edges at i edge dot collision print overlapped um uh, sure just overlapped for now. Hmm, so now I need to do a line-to-line -line overlap. And that lives in my backup um, documents. Yeah, like I said, I reformatted uh, my machine recently and I realized I had 45 gigabytes worth of projects and I have 92 gigabytes of audiobooks. Pretty, pretty wild. I listen to a lot of books. I know, right? <laughs> I 
I like um I like really really long epic fantasy series. So um, Brandon Sanderson, uh, Wheel of Time. Oh, there's another super long one that I finished a couple months ago called The Malazan Book of the Dead. Really interesting series. It took a while. It took me like seven months to get through that series. Here we go. So let's see. Projects. Oh, please don't have to look. Okay, good, good. Um, I think... Dungeon generator. No. Whoa. Hey. Um, Unity. Why is that dungeon generator with nothing? That worries me a lot. Dungeon underscore generator. That was the big one. Assets. Scripts. Shapes. Might have been Edge. It's got to be Edge. Normal. No, it wasn't edge. <clears throat> yeah, my math skills are okay at best, but I don't want to have to, because it took me a while to find out how to do a good line-to-line -line collision uh, the last time I was working on this dungeon project. But I know it's in there somewhere. I know what I'll do. I'll just extract this whole project. Uh, what uh, project are you working on currently, Max? How much time do we got? Oh, shoot! Only 10 minutes! Um, <laughs> yeah, I try and do one hour every day. My schedule's not quite set. Uh, once this semester is over and I'm done teaching my classes, I'll be able to be a lot more consistent with when I stream. But for now, it's just whenever I can find an hour in the day. Reusing code. Shape, no. No cinematic stuff. Corners, vectors, shape collision. Aha! Line to line, edge A, edge B. Yay, reusing code is the best. I probably should have some sort of core um, core namespace where I keep the stuff that I use often. Uh, maybe I'll put that in a to-do. 
between the walls. Ooh, nice. <clears throat> yeah, definitely leveraging the physics so you don't have to do it um, is pretty nice. Other. Oh, geez, I don't remember. So, edge A, edge A. Oh, that would have been a nightmare to debug. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. So, this is edge A. Other is edge B. Oh boy. So edge B is other. This this returns a so it looks like I calculate the intersection, but I'm just returning true. So I guess if I want, I could export the intersection somehow. Ah, uh, you know what I should do just for testing purposes? Um, because I'm almost out of time for today. In my unprotected cube edge, public string debug name. And then when I'm building these edges, current edge dot debug name is equal to edge underscore I edge. And if we overlap an edge, let's say overlapped cube edges at the current edge dot debug name. And then we'll break out of this loop. Mm -hmm. uh, that worries me. Yeah, nothing. No overlaps. I did save. Uh, so Max, when are you thinking about releasing, or when is re Between the Walls going to be uh, showable, I guess? You say you're working at school, so I'm assuming maybe the end of the semester, or I don't know if it's a multi-semester project with your team. Swipe. Oh, oh, that's weird. 
Why is this have a Z of 5.6? What about our edges? Oh dear. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, that's a fun time when you're doing polishing. It really, really helps pull the game together. Um, I'm not quite there yet. I still have a way to go with just my base features that I want to include, but I very much like the polishing stage. And I like the creative prototype stage too, so it's all fun. Hmm. So my swipe collision isn't working because I believe that these world to screen point functions are giving me a Z value as well, which is not what I would expect. Oh, oh, hey, cool, cool. I'm worried that calling this Z value is going to screw up the math. Yeah. Still nothing. Um, I know that there is, there's world to viewport point. <clears throat> and I guess I could, I wanted to use world to screen point because all of my current edges are in pixel space, but I could maybe convert everything to viewport space. Let's just do a test here. And I believe converting to viewport point will go from negative one to one, which I think they call orthonormalized screen space. Huh. Even here, it's like... Wow, that's bizarre. Oh, oh right, I zeroed those out myself. <laughs> I was all excited. Hey, it's working, cool. Hmm. 
Um, I'm going to try another experiment where I'm going to go from 0, 0 in pixel space to the size. Yeah, I agree. I feel like I could treat screen point as a vector 2 and just throw out the Z. And then all of my line collision tests would be on the same plane. And they should, in theory, work. In theory. And I think in Unity, a vector 2 is a vector 3 technically under the hood. So they're not different types in any way. Just one of them always has 0 in the Z property. So let's drag from... So that unprojected center, oh, that seems about right. We're still at 5.6 here. Whoa. Ah, okay, okay. These are the points. Okay, okay, I think I understand what's happening. 523, 283, 5.2. Thanks, Max. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Um, I'll see you later, and if you ever do, once you get a release trailer going for your um, mouse escape game between the walls. I'd love to see it. Peace. I think I'm out too. Um, I'm probably going to spend next tomorrow debugging this. What's the time going? Okay, yep, just a little bit over. So, I'll see you later. Yep, peace.